Hi everyone, thanks for joining me for this special Thanksgiving project of this year. Um, my name is Leslie Yeoman from Hungry Healthy Crafts and this is a Thanksgiving project that I've got prepared to share with you today. Um, I've decided to do a video tutorial and it's split up into two parts so be sure to check out the second video as well and watch it right to the end for an exclusive blooper. Hi everyone, it's coming up to that time of the year again. Um, it's nearly Thanksgiving and um, I wanted to share with you a project which um, I did, um, I think it was two years ago now, um, for Thanksgiving. Um, I had picked up this little wooden pot um, at a, an art store and um, I decorated it with some um, pattern paper using my nestability dies to cut out the, the circles um, and the other shapes like the hearts. And I used some coffee stirrers from Starbucks as well. And what I wanted to do would, was to put some journaling cards in the inside, um, but I couldn't find any that I really liked. So I decided to make my own. So. I put together a um, journaling card like this, which says I am thankful for, and then there was space for a person's name, a date, and then some writing as well. So we passed it around the table and everyone wrote on the journaling card what they were thankful for. And even the kids joined in, they drew pictures and all sorts of things. So it was a really fun activity um, for a very special day. And um, ever since I put this on the website, I have actually given all my viewers access to download this card, this journaling card, so that they can print it off for themselves. And as it is coming up to Thanksgiving again, I can see that there's lots of people on the website who is looking at that journaling card. And so I thought I would make some uh, more, some, some different styles of journaling cards. Uh, so that I can make a project for this Thanksgiving, which is coming up in just a few weeks. So um, what I've done is I've made um, a downloadable PDF uh, and it has four journaling cards and it says on it, thankful for this memory. I'm not sure if you can see it on the, on the video. Um, and there's some space to write um, your journaling as well. And it's in four different colors, which um, are a bit of an autumnal theme. Uh, so if you want to download it, you can. And this is what I'm using today to make this Thanksgiving project. So I've printed off um, a couple of sheets of these cards just on plain white cardstock and I have cut them down to size so you can see here the selection of the journaling cards all ready to go for my project. So I'm going to walk you through um, how, I, um, uh, how I've made it. For the project, I'm going to be using this 12 by 12 um, pad of scrapbook paper. It's by Kane Company and it's actually a Brenda Walton collection uh, and it's called Brookfield. I'm, I've actually had this for years and years, but I keep coming back to it because the colours are just beautiful. They're really autumnal and there's a good selection of designs. We have some stripes with some script in the background, some um, light floral designs, there's some tartan designs, some polka dots and there's also lots of punch out embellishments that you can use like tags and um, these labels as well which are really cool and also some um, some words which you can just pop out pop right out of there. So I'm going to be using this and um, you probably can't get it anymore in the shops but of course like in any project you can use any papers that you have, but this one is what I'm using. So let me show you how you can make each of the sections for our project. You're going to need a couple of pages of 12 by 12 scrapbook paper. And you can see here that what I've done is cut off this excess strip of paper on the right hand side. Um, a lot of pages these days come with this extra bit um, to hold any information and barcodes and things like that. So I've cut that down so it's exactly 12 inches wide. The next thing to do is to cut your page in half 
right along the middle um, at the six inch line. So I now have two pieces of paper which are six inches wide by 12 inches tall. So I'm going to show you how you can fold each one of these panels to create a section for the book. The first thing to do is to put your piece of paper lengthways in front of you um, and you want to create a crease at the halfway mark. So simply line up your corners and the edge and fold it in place. You can use a bone folder to crease that line. I'm just going to use the edge of an acrylic block. The next step is to turn around this piece of paper. So the fold is at the top and the open flap is um, facing you. What we want to do is to create a crease along this um, edge here, along this um, bottom section, about a centimetre up from the bottom. And I like to do that with um, one of these rulers that have the grid marks on it and it makes it really easy um, to ensure that we're making a crease, a straight crease um, at exactly the same distance every time. So I'm using an embossing tool for this one and holding my ruler firmly in place I run across my embossing tool to, to create that crease on the page. So let's fold this over now. And once again I'm going to use the edge of my acrylic block to flatten down that crease. I want to make exactly the same crease on the other side but to ensure that I can get a nice even crease. I'm going to fold this side back. So now I have a flat surface to work on. I'll line up my ruler once again and using my embossing tool draw a line across along the edge of the ruler and fold that flap over and crease. So this is what you're left with. Um, um, an open pocket as it were and the next step is to fold the length in half like this and crease it in place. For the next step what we want to do is to create one, um, one more crease and um, it has to be um, a couple of inches in from here, maybe an inch or two inches. But I'm not going to bother measuring it. I'm happy just to use my ruler. If I use the width of my ruler for every single page, then I know that um, it's going to be exactly the same distance for every single one. So I've creased it and folded. Turn over my project and do exactly the same on this side. So now we have, um, it's almost fanning out here, and these are creating like, little pockets, but they're open at the end. So let's take a little piece of double-sided sticky tape um, or a glue runner to seal up these edges on either side. There we go. So now we have a pocket, a sealed pocket, and if we put our journaling cards in there, they're not going to fall out the end. They're completely secure. So now I have made um, one page, as it were, one, um, one section of the book with this piece of that double-sided scrap of paper. I'm going to take my other 12 by six piece and do exactly the same thing so I can make one, um, make the shape exactly the same. But this time what I'm going to do is fold it with the pattern facing the other way. So I'm folding it in half like this. And rather than having the stripes on the outside, I've got this lovely pattern. So I'm going to continue doing um, exactly the same as what I've just shown you on this piece of paper. So now I have um, two 
pages, let's say they're pages, um, out of the same piece of scrappy paper, but they look really different because they're the opposite of one another. And I've done exactly the same with two other pieces of um, scrapbook paper from that same collection. So we'll have this one here, which has the polka dots and stripes. And then this one, which has um, a bit more of a pinky color. Um, this one with little flowers on it with the tartan color behind. So these are all going to form the basis of um, almost like a mini book. And what I want to do is to um, stagger the pages. Um, so I'm going to take one from this first collection, this first set. I'm going to take a page from the second set and then one from the third, first, second and third. So now that they're all evenly spaced, so the same colors appear throughout the, the whole collection evenly. You don't have one bank of colours at the start and another at the end. So I've stacked them all up on top of each other, um, all with the folded end um, on the left hand side. And the reason that we have created this crease is um, we are going to sew um, and bind along this, um, this flat bit here so that it's stuck securely and each of the pages, pages will fan out at that crease mark. And you can see as I hold these pieces together there that they're all fanning out really, really nicely. So the next step of, on the office project is to um, create some holes in this side of um, the project, in this, this binding section. And what I like to do um, is to use bald dog clips to hold either end securely in place, like this. Oops, if I can. There we go. Um, and all my pages are all lined up nice and neat. And now we're ready to make some holes. So I'm going to be using my crocodile to punch the holes into uh, this section of the, the mini book. Um, but unfortunately the paper is too thick to go into the side of my crocodile. So what I'm going to have to do is to separate my book 